everything sorted. Thanks for praying for me, Paula. It's not all that bad, I just can't breathe, so, so no, nothing important. <coughs> as we open the word. Lord, I just pray that as we, we look at your word, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would give me the words to say, Lord, use me as your vessel to, to share, but I pray that you would open our hearts to, to learn this morning. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been looking at Acts, and we're going to continue in Acts today. We're in Acts um, chapter 13, and we're starting in verse 13. And this is looking at the early church and how the, the gospel message, how the church grew and, and the message of Jesus came not only just to the Jewish world, but to the Gentile world as well. So we're going to jump straight in. Um, verse 13 here of Acts chapter 13. From um, Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in um, Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went on to the city in Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So just, uh, Paul and Barnabas, this is not the same Antioch that is in Turkey. So I, I believe there's seven or eight different Antiochs. Um, in that area at that time. So this is a different Antioch. So this, they, if you remember last week, they've traveled to the island of Crete and, they're, um, and that's where, where they're ministering and where they're shared about Jesus. And so they're in um, this town called Pisidian Antioch. There's a little short line here that is, uh, as you read it, you probably might not think much of it, but it has significance in the later parts of Acts. It says here, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. As I said last week, this is John Mark. He is the writer of the Gospel of Mark. And so he was a, a travel companion here at first with Paul and Barnabas. Later he had spent time with Peter. Um, and the reason it's significant here that he left them was because that starts a bit of a conflict later on between Paul and Barnabas. So this is what this time is what is known as Paul's first missionary journey. So he has begun traveling around um, this area, around the Mediterranean area, to share the message of Jesus. This is the first time he's gone around. So he's going kind of town to town, new towns, and they'll have what, if you look at the maps of your Bible, the second missionary journey and the third missionary journey. Um, and so it's just the routes that he took at different times. So this is the first one. We'll get to a, a, the time he leaves for a second time. And at that time, Paul and Barnabas are getting ready to go. Barnabas wants to take John with them. Paul does not, because Paul feels like he abandons them in the middle of this first time. And they, he thinks that he's not, not worth bringing on again. And so there's a bit of a dispute that happens between Paul and Barnabas such a big dispute that they actually decide to part ways. And um, Barnabas takes John with him, and Paul goes his own way. So that's a, a bit of a history that's going to, we'll, we'll speak about it more as we, we get into like Acts chapter 15 and, and farther where, where it plays out. But it's just a, a simple line here, where, you know, you think nothing of it really. It's just, oh, okay, so John's gone back to Jerusalem. But it actually has a lot of significance later on. And not to spoil it, but Paul and Barnabas do eventually reconcile. And in fact, um, in one of the, the epistles that Peter, sorry, that Paul writes, he talks about John Mark being with him. And so, but there's a, a lot that happens in the midst of that. So here at this time, John Mark has left. And the Bible has no, doesn't say why he's left if he's homesick, whether he got a message to someone sick, whether he's, you know, feeling like it's 
it's too hard and he leaves, there's too much persecution. There's no indication of why, apart from the fact that, that Paul was unwilling to take him on the next journey as a result of him leaving. And so he leaves, they get to this town, this town of uh, Pisidian Antioch, and they go to the synagogue. The way it was set up is they have the temple in Jerusalem, and then as you travel around, you have synagogues. And the synagogues were where the local Jewish people would gather, and any Jewish converts would go to the, the synagogues. So this is Paul's way as he goes. He always goes to the synagogue in the town first. He does that here, and he's recognized as someone who might have a word. You know, he, in his previous life, he um, was a Pharisee, so he was somebody of standing within the Jewish religious um, groups. And so he arrives there, and they say, do you have a word of exhortation for the people? Please speak. You know, if we had somebody, with, if, when Billy Graham was alive, if he came to church one day and showed up, I might say, hey, hey, Billy, would you like to, um, I'll probably say Mr. Graham, um, <laughs> Mr. Graham, would you, would you have something that you'd like to say to the church today? And, and you'd probably say, yeah, Brad, sit down, Billy, please um, stand up. Um, and that's essentially what they did. Okay, Paul, you traveled, you, you were a Pharisee, you know, would you have something you'd like to share with the people today? And Paul, not one to give up on a opportunity to share the message of Jesus, he stands up. Um, I'm going to read this passage of what he says when he stands up. So it's, it's a bit long, but let's follow it together in verse 16. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Israelites and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our ancestors. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country. For about 40 years, he endured their conduct in the wilderness, and he overthrew seven nations in Canaan, giving their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges into the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I am not the one you are looking for, but there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Fellow children of Abraham and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is, us, it is to us this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to give him execute, have him executed. Then they had car sorry, when they had carried out all that was written about him, they took, down, took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have become your father. God raised him up from the dead, so he will never be subjected to decay. As God said, I will give you the holy and sure blessing promised to David. So I know that's a, a long passage um, to, to look through, to, to get through. But Paul speaks to them, and he shares with them, and it's interesting, he starts with things that they know. So as he's talking, he's, he's sharing, he's saying, this is the history of Israel. This is something that if you were a Jew, you knew. This was oral tradition, this is in the synagogues, this is passed down from generation to generation. We are God's chosen people, we are from Abraham, um, we are 
you know, have judges, the, the kings. This is the, the promise of God. So he, he starts with things that these people would understand, where, where he would be able to follow. And then from that, he takes them to where he can preach Jesus as a result of that, to, to share Jesus with them, what Jesus did. And today, as we think about sharing the message of Jesus with somebody, what we need to do is we need to find out where people are. You know, what do people know? What, what, where can we connect with people and then bring them to a place of seeing Jesus? Paul knew, well, I'll start in the Old Testament. This is the history. You know, if you were a Jew at that time, you knew that there was a Messiah promise. You knew somebody was coming. So he's met them where they are, and then he's begun to use that and progress to share Jesus with them. He brings quotes from the Old Testament. He brings quotes from the Psalm, and he brings quotes from Isaiah to, to show that, that Jesus is the one who has come. He's preaching to them. There's a few more um, things he quotes here. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not l let your Holy One see decay. Now when David had served God's purpose as his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. So he was dead for only three days, and so that, that's, and he came back to life again. So that was predicted that his body would not see decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. A justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Take care what the prophets have said um, does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. Uh, before we go to this, I just want to go back to this, this slide here where it, it says, through him, so this is through Jesus, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. That's, that's good news. That's wonderful news. Because if we see sin for what it is, we see sin as deserving punishment. If you know the verse in Romans, the wages of sin is death. The, the, the payment of our sin is death. And it says, saying right here, that through him, everyone who believes is set free, not just from some sins, but every sin. And I don't know about you, but I've sinned more than once. I don't need to just be saved from one sin. I need to be saved from every sin. And it is here, it talks about this word justification. When we were looking through Romans, we talked about justification a lot. I just want to explain it. It's a big word, but what it basically means is when God declares us righteous. He declares us no longer tarnished by our sin, no longer deserving the wrath of God, the punishment of our sin, but we are seen by God as holy, as righteous, not because we are righteous on our own, but because he is looking at us through what Jesus did. And so here it's very clear, we cannot have justification through laws. So the Israelites, they had the Torah, which is the books of the law, and, and some of the, the history of where, how God brought them to that, the first books of the Bible, but the, the books of the law gave them strict rules how to follow what to do. You know, and we live in a society where there's rules, right? We, we can't do whatever we want. You know, if, if you're going 130 down the highway and a cop sees you, he's going to tell you quite nicely, slow down, right? And then put you on your way. There's consequences. There's, when we break the law, when we do things wrong, there are consequences. Just like when we sin, there's a consequence to our sin, which is the, the wrath of God, which is being separated from God, the punishment of our sins. So there's no doing all the right things, obeying all the laws, and, and being justified. The law wasn't able to justify. It was only through Jesus that they were able to be justified. And so Paul is sharing this message with, with these people who probably 
Some of them, like some people today, are trying to earn their way to make God happy with them. You know, if I just go to church enough times, uh, you know, I, I put something in the offering on the way in. Um, you know, I, I try to be nice. If I do all these things, I'm going to make God happy with me. And then one day when I, I see him, then he's probably not going to hold my sins against him. And that's, that is a false gospel. That is a gospel that will take you to places where you don't want to go. The Bible is very clear that it's only through Jesus and his grace that we are able to, to be justified, to have the punishment of our sin taken off of us. And so Paul, he's holding no, you know, he's, he's not pulling any punches here. He's, he's um, taking the truth to these people, sharing the truth with these Jewish people and the Gentiles who are God-fearing and, and worshiping with them. Where was I? Okay, verse 47. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you... Sorry. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogues, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. So as a result of this message, this sharing with the people, they, they enjoyed it so much they asked him to come back. That's always a good sign of a, a preacher. If you preach and they want you to come back, then, then that's, that's positive. They, they said, Paul, you know, Paul Barnabas, come back next Sabbath, share with us again. But some people weren't content to wait a week. They actually followed him, Paul and Barnabas, out. You know, so if you want to follow me out, I can, I can continue to, to share with you after the service. That's fine. But they, they were that hungry that we, we're not going to wait until next Sabbath to hear more. And they wanted to hear more. They, that, there was that hunger from these people to hear about Jesus and what he had done with them. And here at the very end, it says he urged them to continue in the grace of God. To me, this says that some of these people accepted that message. Some of these people believed in Jesus, and he's encouraging them to continue in the grace of God, receiving the message of Jesus. And these, that's that hunger from these people. There's times where I've met people who had a hunger for God. It was, they, they were just ready. You, they, in fact, sometimes they come to you, tell me, you know, I want to be a Christian. That's a, a hunger. They want to, to see that. Other times, it, it takes prayer. It takes explaining things, answering their questions. But these people, they were hungry. They were ready. They heard the message, and they received Jesus. Okay, next Sabbath. So a week has passed. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. So if you guys get busy this week, it would be great to see the whole city here. Our COVID limit's now 300, so I guess we'll have to cap it at 300. Um, but I could, we could do it. We could have a, a revival. I, you know, hold four or five services throughout the day. The whole town could come. But the whole town had heard. Those people had gone and shared with their neighbors, with their friends. This, this man, Paul, he's speaking this truth about Jesus. A huge crowd came, almost the whole city, gathered to hear the word of the Lord. And this is not a Jewish town. You know, the Jewish people would have been used to worshiping in the synagogue. But these were the Gentiles who would have come. These were the people of the city who wanted to hear. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Here Paul is, he's trying to share the truth. He's trying to say the things of God, share the message of God. And he is having, um, he's having abuse heaped on him. He's having people contradicting what he is saying. And these people, these, these Jewish people, well, well, one week they're inviting him to, to preach, and then, oh, come back next week. Now they've become jealous. They... They're jealous of what 
Paul has been able to do by gathering this crowd. And when I, I see that, I see they're letting themselves get in the way, their pride get in the way of hearing the message of Jesus and welcoming that. So much were they, they jealous that instead of listening and being objective, they begin to contradict what he has to say. And in the world today, there are lots of people who do contradict what the Bible says. There are even churches and preachers who say things that are, are different than the, the teaching of the Bible. Oh, if, if we all believe, you know, whatever you believe in, there's, we'll all get there in the, in the, in the all, so all paths lead to the top of the mountain, if, if you want to say it that way. Whether you're a Muslim, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a, you know, a, a Jew of the, um, who follows the, the belief of Judaism, whatever it is, as long as you believe in that solidly, that's, that's going to get you there. there. There are some people who say they're Christians, but yet that's, that's the view that they have, which is very contrary to what the Bible says. The Bible says that it's only through Jesus. And so there are some people who are contradicting the, the, what the truth is, and yet they're, they think that it is the truth. And that's why it's, it's key for us to know God's Word, to understand what it says. Because there's lots of things that can sound good. Well, that sounds very inclusive. Well, if you believe whatever you want, we're all going to go to the same place as long as we, we, we believe it in our hearts. That sounds very inclusive and, and loving towards other people. But that's not what the Bible says. And these people were contradicting the truth that Paul was sharing. And there are people today who do the same thing. Verse 46, Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first, since you rejected it, and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. So here, the, Jew, Paul, the Jews aren't accepting the message. Paul and Barnabas said, we're, we're telling you the truth. If you're going to reject it, we're going to go to the Gentiles. These people are hearing the truth, and they're accepting it. And as it, it quotes here from Isaiah, I have made you a light for the Gentiles. The Jews were a light for all nations to be able to accept the message of Jesus. And we see that now, we see a, a turn here in the book of Acts where um, the Gentiles are beginning in, in great numbers to, to follow the teachings uh, about Jesus and, and putting their faith and trust in Jesus. And when, here it says, and all who are appointed for eternal life believe. This is an interesting statement here. Um, and there, there's different meanings by what this means. It can mean perhaps that not everybody accepted Christ at this time, that not everyone believed. Some of the Gentiles did not believe. There are people, if, if you are familiar with theological terms, there's a, a group of people who consider themselves what they call predestination. And that is essentially the belief that all people are already destined one way or another to accept Christ or not. And there's another group, which are called the um, um, Aramean group, and they believe in what's called free will, free choice. Uh, I tend to think that it's a combination of the two. There's scriptures that are very clear that we have a free choice, that we choose to, to follow God. And then there's also verses like, none of us can come to him except he draws us to himself. And so there's a fact that of him drawing us and opening us up to him. So there's a bit of a combination here. But if we believe that God is all-knowing, then we would believe that God already knows who is going to accept him and who's not. But in God's wonderful grace, in knowing that, he still gives us the choice to choose. And so it's, it's a bit of, in my view is a bit of a combination of the two. I think they, they fit together. If you, um, if you look at it that way, I know there are probably some people here are going to be on one side of the fence or the other. Sorry for standing on the fence um, uh, about this issue. But I believe we, we have a choice. Each of us has a choice. Uh, but I also believe God knows which one of us are going to accept. So those who were appointed, those who 
who whose hearts are ready at this time and that God knew was going to come, those people believed in Jesus and put their, their faith and trust in him. And so the, the gospel has spread again to the Gentile people. The Jewish people in this town have begun to reject him. And so, as we said, Paul, they answered him boldly uh, with the truth. And the response of these Jewish people, the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So they weren't just content to have the people, um, to just have Paul and Barnabas sharing and we're not going to agree with them. They were so adamant and jealous that they actually stirred up persecution and again, Paul and Barnabas here, they've left the Jewish people, and they're, they're talking with the Gentile people. And so it's not like he's there in the church causing disruption. They have left the church, but they, they, because of that jealousy, because of, of these Jewish leaders, they actually have incited the leaders of the city to persecute the, um, Paul and Barnabas, so much so that they are expelled from the region. And so what do they do? They shake the dust off of their feet. And this is a, a symbolic thing that they do. Um, so in this time, when some, a Jew is traveling among areas that was not Israel, so if they were traveling, um, this would have been, Crete would have been an area, when they would leave that area to go back into Israel, they <coughs> would shake the dust off their feet. And it was symbolic of cleansing themselves, coming back in, that they're God's chosen people, and they need to be pure before him. And so them shaking their feet here, they're essentially saying, well, you, even though you're Jews, you are now have become unclean. You're not accepting Jesus. Jesus has now come, and you are rejecting him. And so you are now unclean, because Jesus is the only one who can make us truly clean. So they're shaking the dust off their feet, and symbolic to these Jewish people who are refusing to listen and hear the truth. Here, the, the first part of, of verse 49, the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. That was spread, not, I mean, yes, Paul and Barnabas were, were sharing, but it was spread through the whole region because these people heard the message of Jesus and they were willing to share it, be a light where they went. And then it finishes in verse 42, and the disciples, these are the, these new believers, these Gentile believers, and yes, a few of the Jewish people, I believe, um, did accept Christ the way it's wording, worded earlier in the passage after the first time they preached. They were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And uh, it's important, I think, here that, again, the, the the receiving of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is a sign that these people were, were true believers. And so um, these people, Gentiles, are true believers in Christ, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. As I look at verse 49 and I look at verse 42, those are two verses I wish and pray that we could say over our area one day. Yes, there are believers in Blaney and Millthorpe and Orange, our surrounding area, the central west area. There are believers here. Uh, not just in our church, there's believers in other churches, and that's wonderful. But can we say that the word of the Lord has spread to our, our whole region? Are there people talking and hearing? And can we get to a place where we say that the disciples... I mean, the disciples there are, I believe that they are filled with joy. Hopefully we're joyful this morning. And filled with God's Spirit. If we are a believer, that He sends His Spirit to reside in us. We looked at that last week, I believe. How, but my prayer is that we, as God's people, will share the message of Jesus with people who need to hear. The true message. The message that is in the Gospels. The message that's in God's Word. 
so that our region can hear that message. So that as they become disciples, they can be filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. If you go around and talk to random people, there are some happy people. There are joyful people. But there are a lot of people who are struggling. A lot of people who, who don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have God there living and doing life with them through his Holy Spirit. And we as God's people, we are to bear witness. Just like these, these people here in this community shared the message of Jesus to those who need to hear. That's our job as well. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for all the believers in our area, in the Central West area, all the people who, are, who have accepted you and put their belief in you. Lord, we, we pray that we would be people who would share the good news of Jesus with those around us. And just like after just a few weeks of, of, of Paul and Barnabas sharing with his people, the whole region was hearing about you. Lord, may we share you, share the message of Jesus with those we come into contact with. Lord, may we invite them to church. May we, may we follow Paul's, Paul's method of, of, of seeing where they're at, taking them where they are, and then pointing them to Jesus. And Lord, just like in this story, there used to be some people who reject it. Lord, we know that people will reject this message. But there are many people who will hear it, receive it, open their heart up to you, and put their faith and trust in you. And as a result, they will be filled with joy and with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for anyone here who needs a dose of your joy, who life has, has gotten to where it's pulling them down. Lord, may they look at salvation, what you've done for them. May, may it give us a grateful heart and a joy that regardless of our situations, Lord, we have the gift of eternal life and we have your Holy Spirit living inside of us. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> I'm going to invite Paula and Phil to come back up. We're going to, um, well, they're going to sing for us How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And it's a wonderful song of recognizing God's love and how much he, he does care for us. <laughs>